Hey friends, it's John and Mike from brew-dudes.com, your favorite homebrewing blog. At least that's what my mom says. Uh, we were going to be drinking brown ale, but uh, that'll be ready for next week. It's coming. It's just the way it is. You know, these community brews take time, but it's going to be epic. But uh, in, the, in the meanwhile, my friend Mike here brewed a porter. And because we are keepers of the flame, and uh, malty beers are what Mike wants to drink because he's sick of hoppy beers, clearly. I just can't take it Something anymore. about that. So you have this porter, and I've had it. I've had it because we actually drank this during our community brew session, mm -hmm. and it's great. I don't. Uh, we didn't. We didn't talk about it. We didn't it. talk about it. We were, we were streaming going, live. hey, this is nice. This is nice, but we waited until we did this video to talk more about it. And since then, it's aged very nicely. It was great then, it's great now. All right, Michael, tell us more about this. What is your batch size? <laughs> okay, so um, this porter is, uh, my batch size <laughs> is six and a half It's gallons. always six half that's gallons. That's volume, for me, that's volume at the end of the boil, yes. six and a half gallons. All right, yes, let me sir. give you a quick rundown on the recipe. Yes. Um, Grains and percentages, please. Okay, it's 74% Maris Otter, 7.4% Medium Crystal, 55 ah, Love. Darn Medium Crystal. Um, it's also 7.5% Victory Malt, 25 SRM. Um, and then it's 5.6% Black Malt or Black Patent. Uh, that's 525 SRM. Yes. These are the values. Very and then. Dark. Uh, then also, it's actually 5.6% brown malt, because I don't think you can have a great English porter without a little kick of brown That's malt. That's true. Brown malt is very special malt that really works only in porter. Uh, <laughs> everything else just makes it taste brown. Um, and then, know how that tastes. to mix life up a little bit, I uh, used one ounce of Challenger hops as bittering. Oh, cool. Where normally I would do something like this, just East Kent Golding's the whole way through. But I finished this thing off, uh, so the Challenger's at 60 minutes. East Kent Golding. 10 minutes to go, two ounces, 6% alpha acid with the East Kent Goldings. Um, so total IBUs estimated about 35. The color is about 31 SRM. Um, my estimated ABV on this beer, I was shooting for, I don't see it on here, but I was shooting for about, you know, f upper 5%, 4.5 to 5%. And my starting gravity on this baby was about uh, 10.55. Wow. Great. Yes. Super nice. I mean... Yep. I, my favorite porter out there right now is from uh, the small breweries, Mayflower, yeah. um, from Plymouth, Massachusetts, and this tastes like a clone of that porter. Um, it's rich in its taste, yeah. not, it's not uh, like, not in terms of body, but more of its flavor. Yeah. I think the brown malt is what does it. There's like just this, it's not overly roasty. It's very uh, toasty, malty, yeah. and um, a little bit of chocolate, like dark chocolate notes, but like not too too much. It doesn't like really overly bitter sweet chocolate, though, yeah. right? Like no, there's no. no sweetness. It's like 85% it's like, like dark. Cacao. Like cacao. Yeah. Um, That's what I, and like maybe a little bit of licorice at the end. Yeah, which I think I, I think is like the Mayflower Porter definitely kicks with a little yeah. licorice like well, finish I mean, to it. It's one of those things that makes you go, oh, yes, that's, right? what's this? Um, I like this too. It's very toasty roasty yeah. and not like roasty roasty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're keeping score. Of course. Um, which I like. I wish that I would like it to be, so there's two things. I'd like to pick up just a little bit more like caramel note from the medium crystal. Got it. Just a little bit more. But I will say, um, when I fermented this, this this guy's finishing gravity, uh, I may have pulled it a little early, but it, it finished at about uh, 10, 16 or something. And I, I want, to, it needs to be a little bit drier than that. And I wonder if it was a little bit drier, if the, if the amount of caramel malt that's in here now would sort of come out a little bit more. Because um, I think I've seen that happen <clears throat> in recipes I've done before. Um, this is the first time I've actually gone back to using my direct fired recirculating mash tun. I haven't done that in a while. And uh, I love that system in that process, but I think what happens is sometimes I'm superheating the wort underneath the, the grain bed. Um, 
and I'm not, it's not recirculating fast enough, so I'm denaturing the enzymes a little bit too soon. Hmm. Um, and so by doing so, I end up with a wort that isn't as fermentable as it could be. Um, it still tastes great, and I'd, it'd be a shame to like fix that problem, have it, <laughs> have it dry out to like 10-10, and have it be like super dry and roasty. Like yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a dry roast, like no. a... Um, maybe to make that black malt would like take on its ashy character that some people complain about. Although I've never gotten ashy character from black malt, but um, I don't know. I do love it the way it is. It tastes absolutely great. But I think I'm going to try to rebrew it sometime here before the snow really flies, before it starts getting too cold, and just have it ready. And I'm going to try to just dry it out a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, but I think that direct fire mash ton. I think that might really work well with a big, big monster beer. Yeah, you know, like if it's uh, if it's yeah. doing what you say it's doing, having a higher finished gra finishing gravity, yep. um, might be uh, at, into your advantage. Yeah. I just noticed on other beers that even smaller starting gravities, like ten forty fives, they've only fermented down to like ten seventeen or something. That's just really crappy attenuation, True. you know. So, um, but we'll see. I think like a big chewy stout, I could definitely let it rip through that system and generate some real dextrins. The one thing I do like about the direct fired mash, not to get too far away from this beer, is that it works really well for making poorly fermentable wort for sour beers. Ah, because the bugs, nice. the 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 microbes go crazy with the extra yeah. dextrins and stuff. But anyhow, nice ruby notes. So when you hold it up to a light, it's uh, it looks fairly black when I look at it. But yeah. uh, but the I, brown you can look comes at the, like the bottom of the glass, you can yeah. see the a little brown. Yep. Yeah, right on. Yeah, it's so tasty. Yeah, cool. so, you know, brewing these other styles, we can't forget about these other styles, man. It's not just pale ales and IPAs, and I'm sorry if I offend anybody. <laughs> but So what's your biggest tip to, like, be successful with a porter like this? I think you got to be bold with the character malts. Okay. Um, like, for this, this is only six and a half gallons, but we're talking about a pound of crystal malt, a pound of victory malt. I mean, a pound of victory malt. I've never gone to a full pound, but I said to myself... Go big or big, go I home. want the malt character to be right in front of your face, and it is, and it's right there. Yep. So pick one or two character malts in your list of character malts. And go nuts. And really have them stand out and be yeah. strong, right? Yeah. So um, I think that the brown and the black malt are just playing a, 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 a good supporting role, just giving enough roast and toast, um, but not overpowering, at least so. So you got to play with those levels. Okay. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. This is a great beer. And what was the yeast? Sorry, the yeast strain again was. This was Y yeast, 1968, London ESP. Oh, so that's this right. is the. I was gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> my plan was. I don't know if I can do it anymore because I racked off of the fermenter. I, you know, I gotta save the yeast. But um, I was gonna use the yeast from this to go into my community brew. Got it. Yeah. So I still have the cake. I just need to probably do a starter because it's been sitting in the fermenter for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got it. All right. So, dude. You're out there, you're a home brewer, you're keeping the flame. I'm keeping it going. Uh, expect several more of these vintage styles vintage. from me in the coming months. Oh, yeah, so. Cuz I've got I got things in here and things in here that have to wow. make their way to a glass. Holy mackerel. Yep. Here comes that American amber we've been waiting for for all these years. All those years. Yes. All right, well thanks a lot. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel. We do this every week. Some kind of wacky video like this where we talk about brewing beers at home and uh, hopefully pass on some knowledge, but also get knowledge from you. That's the best part of it all. And, um, you know, we'll just keep doing it. If you're into it, we're into it. Appreciate it. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.